right, this is Brent Leary, and I'm still here hanging out at Icon 2017, and I'm sitting with the folks from Kickstagram. I just like that name. Uh, Ronan and Casey, thank you. These are the co-founders of Kickstagram. Thanks for joining me for a few minutes. Yeah, thanks for having us here. So uh, I had a chance to catch a little of you guys on stage talking about uh, the business and you know, mm -hmm. thing, how things got started. And, and you guys are up for one of those big awards, the Small Business Icon Award, which is really cool. Definitely. So uh, let's talk a little bit about how you guys got started. Maybe give us a little bit of your personal backgrounds and how you guys got started with Kickstagram. Yeah. Um, yeah, so my background is actually in accounting. I uh, studied accounting in college in San Diego State, worked at a CPA firm for three years. Ronan's, Ronan's journey was a little bit different than mine. He went to Gonzaga. Yeah, I, I, and then after college, I went over to China and started uh, sourcing and manufacturing products uh, for clients back in, in the States. And then Casey and I kind of hooked up because it was too hard to do it just from China. So um, Casey was there in the States, and then he would travel back to China and we'd kind of meet up and, and stuff like that, visit factories and whatnot. And then just kind of being in that space, you know, other opportunities kind of come about from it and one of those was you know it was just serendipitous timing if you will you know as we were starting our business Kickstarter was also taking off and you know social media Instagram too around that time mm -hmm. 2012 2013 or something like that and you know we would get a lot of clients they would be successful with their Kickstarter and then they were like okay well now how do we fulfill our products whether it's watches or a new little tech device or something like that and that's where you know friends of friends and, and whatever you know they're like hey you guys are in China can you can you get this product and then so we would oversee the manufacturing the development of that and then you know ship it back to them now after we fulfilled on their Kickstarters so we had selfish interest in the fact that the more they sold the bigger our commission would be right and so it was like after the Kickstarter they were like well now what do we do can we go into retail and, you know they didn't really didn't have access to retail you know distribution channels so it was obviously e-commerce and one thing with e-commerce was okay social media and so 2012 2013 14-ish you know it was able to post on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter mm -hmm. and you know get traffic back to your website and then once you got the traffic back to your website you can convert into sales so we found that instagram was a good solution and casey kind of yeah was sitting around one night and yeah i was working on one of our our clients at the time their their instagram and i just started liking pictures based off people that hashtag words that were relevant to their their you know wooden steel watch people that were into watches or i don't know fit that type of vibe or different things like that and the next day I was pretty surprised they actually got a lot of followers back and I was like wow they were telling me how much they've been struggling lately and I you know yeah my thumb hurt because I did about two or three hundred <laughs> likes but but uh, I was actually really pleased with the results obviously I did it for a couple more days just to make sure it was the real deal it kept working and uh, then I realized how do I do this without my thumb falling off more or less you know um, so initially we looked into like automating this process, but we knew when you do something automated, you got to be careful because you got to put in filters in place. And so we partnered with a developer and made our own like software on the back end. And really, just being like students of Instagram and also knowing our clients and listening to them, I think we did a pretty good job of like finding the happy medium of being able to do these 2,000 engagements a day, but same time be extremely targeted because you don't want to waste that when you have such only a limited amount of engagements and that's was kind of the birth initially kind of a hobby like I said liking and picking up five ten clients at first and we we're like wow this is cool people are interested let's try to email a hundred people this week or something we send them out of our gmails well oh, four or five respond they're interested wow that's pretty good return you know and client acquisition as far as only sending 100 emails next week 200 you know and, and then we we got to the point where like wow we could actually you know we have 20 30 clients and we're like yeah we should probably stop our other things we're doing and focus on this because we see this potential in it's way this bigger, industry you know? yeah instagram's huge so it and like, it's kind of i guess uh ironic you know yeah. we started out doing this automation for social media 
and now we're using this using soft that kind of automates you know a lot of our stuff and so just seeing like that power of automation on, on what we're selling and you know we're actually using it as well you know it's, it's automation automating our automation no. <laughs> <laughs> no. seems like that's so what's, what's been the impact overall automating your automation has bad what are some of the results you've seen yeah I mean one of the biggest stats that we kind of like to share is we had a hundred clients and four employees and everything you know there's a lot slipping through the cracks and kind of unorganized everything was out of Gmail and just you know, it was just a lot of manual work and we started to implement Infusionsoft and now we're sitting at 700 clients with six employees so the biggest thing is for us is we were able to get to 700 and only add two more employees you know yeah. and a lot of it you know we're getting sales in now we brought our whole team here you know everyone who's signing up now is getting a, a sequence of automation like like they think someone's sending it you know which is, mm -hmm. which is cool and how has it been able to enhance the way that you do your work with your customers are you able to build and do things that maybe you hadn't even thought of because now you have a little bit more time to spend with customers understanding yeah. their businesses as opposed to you know doing those routine tasks that you typically yeah. have to do i mean i think a big thing we're starting to get into is providing that extra value that like you, like you're saying we didn't have time to provide or create video we're doing a lot more in-house video because like we were talking about before, the better their Instagram is and the more they know about running an effective and, you know, uh, the best Instagram they can, account they can run, our, our software and our service is going to do better stuff for them. So there's that, uh, you know, mutual, I don't know, mutual freaking benefit. benefit for both of us, you know, that's the word thanks. But yeah, there's mutual benefit, the better their Instagram account is, the more we're going to send traffic to them, it's going to turn into a follower. So uh, yeah, we create now videos on whatever's hot or trending on Instagram. Show them that, you know, send it out to them. That's something we couldn't do before. Like make handhold them a little bit more on the onboarding, but make sure, you know, some of it's gonna be through a personal touch, but some of it can be through a high quality video and it's gonna do the same thing in, in reality a lot of times and, or maybe even give the client a little more time to rewind and look at it again. So we're really like testing that out and we've seen some positive feedback. Since you guys are you know big in the Instagram and how popular it is, give us like a tip. Give us something that the folks uh, don't know about Instagram yeah. that they should know about it. I mean, they might know, it, and I think everyone knows it's just harder to do. It's it's just if you're a brand, just be consistent with posting each day and be consistent with the content that you post. So you know the example I gave on stage today is sometimes we have people who. You know they'll sign up their brand and they have great jewelry for example you know the jewelry is flawless but then you go and look at their instagram and they're posting selfies or a picture of their dog or what they had for dinner on their brand profile and it's like well no no one's following you because of that they're following <laughs> you because of your jewelry you know show off the the, the lifestyle of the jewelry not like don't intermix the personal you know what i mean like, yeah Unless it's the most high quality picture and they, you know, like, you know, yeah, but it reason. seems, yeah, there's some good reason, but it seems like people really like commingle that personal yeah. and brand thing a little bit too much. Being so, a smaller business, because yeah. you probably are the one who is handling the social media, you know, and so it's probably easier when you're like, oh, I'm at this cool event, snap the photos. And, <laughs> and then like, yeah, my tip too would be just don't be afraid to like emulate other people that are doing it. Yeah great like there's a lot of accounts out there you'll look and you're like wow this is amazing and just if you think about it and look at it you can kind of write down what they're doing that you're not doing and s start trying to do that because I mean, we always say like look you know look in your space at the big players so say if I'm starting a, a athletic shoe brand I would look at Nike you know because Nike has the team of 15 social media managers and they know what content to produce what content when to post it it's like they're already doing it. Just take what you can and f tweak it to fit your brand or your voice. You know? Yeah, that's the easiest way to do it. This is very cool. Tell uh, mm -hmm. folks where they can learn more about what you guys are doing. Uh, you can go to kickstagram.io uh, and all the information is right there. Feel free to give us a call if you want to. Yeah, there's a numbers there. That's you know a lot of people like calling in and and learning more, which is great. You know we've seen we're not so tech savvy as say most SaaS companies if you will but the fact that you know a lot of our success has been just been able to get on the phone I think a lot of people have tried to like 
take away that personal touch and should just go everything digital and try and show everything on the website. But you know, the fact that we list our number in like big bold right on the front, people call in all the time like, hey, yeah, I saw it. Just so like, but I just want to make sure what is it or like how did, you know, and then, you know, they automatically feel way more comfortable rather than just going to a website where there's no one to actually talk and interact That's with. pretty cool to know because yeah. a lot of people seem to be trying to get away from Exactly. Don't, yeah. don't call us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Very cool. Yeah. Well, thanks and, and good luck with the contest. Hey, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.